So we are now in the section where questions are of numerical value type and the first question of this section is question 21. Question 21 says a spherical shell of mass m inner radius r and outer radius 2r is placed on a rough surface and it is attached with a spring of spring constant k as shown in figure. The spring is slightly compressed and then released. If shell does not slip over the surface, its time period of oscillation is 5 under root 101 m by n k. The value of n is well, the question involves multiple concepts. Well, concepts of moment of inertia, torque and uh, of course oscillations are involved. In fact, there is also the concept of rolling without slipping. So, what we do here is we consider the center as C. We are naming it C, the center of the shell, the point of contact as O and first of all, we try to find the differential equation for oscillation or differential equation for SHM. Now we consider that the center has shifted by distance x from its equilibrium position. So if center has shifted by small distance x from its equilibrium position, the deformation in the spring would be 2x. And so the spring force, let's call it Fs, is going to be equal to k into 2x. Remember, x is the displacement of the center. The reason is that while this distance is 2r, the distance of the topmost point is 4r from the surface on which it is rolling without slipping. So, Fs is k into 2x. Further, we note that if angular displacement of the shell from its equilibrium position is theta, then theta into 2r is equal to x. And let's replace it here. So, the spring force now becomes 2k into 2r theta. So, again 2r theta or well this is coming out to be 4 k r theta that is the spring force. Let us now look at the restoring torque about point O. If we consider point O or the axis passing through O and perpendicular to the plane of figure, of course the spring force will have a torque and there are the forces acting. The other forces are mg, weight of shell, the normal reaction and in fact this point O is an accelerated point so we have to consider a pseudo force also. But line of action of each of these three forces is passing through O and that is why the torque of these forces about this axis is 0. So we have to only consider torque of the spring force and that torque, well, we can see that is equal to the spring force multiplied by 4R because 4R is the distance of the line of action of force from the axis and of course the axis and the line of action of force are mutually perpendicular. So, we have the expression for tau O and this is the uh, Fs multiplied by 4R. So, this is coming out to be 16 into k R square into theta and now our differential equation is this is equal to in fact, we can say that I O into d2 theta by dt square is equal to in fact, net, net torque which is minus 16 k R square theta and this gives us the expression for omega which is under root of 16 k r square divided by i naught and well the time period is being asked so time period t would be 2 pi by omega so 2 pi under root i naught by 16 k r square. So now to progress further we need to find the value of i o and we shall find i o by using the parallel axis theorem. So first of all we find i c the moment of inertia about the axis passing through the center and then we apply the parallel axis theorem. So, IC would be and for finding the IC we shall use the fact that moment of inertia of a thin spherical shell about a diameter is 2 by 3 mr square and to find the moment of inertia IC we are dividing the shell into thin spherical shells and well an element has radius r and thickness dr. So, it is shaped like a thin spherical shell. So, I say is 2 by 3 integral 2 by 3 dm and dm will be 4 pi r square dr into rho into r square. So, this is r square and the limit of small r will go from capital R to 2 times capital R. This is our I C. Let us evaluate this further. So, we have 2 pi in fact, we have 2 into 4 pi which is 8 pi by 3 and 
for rho we can write mass divided by the volume occupied by the material of the shell which is 4 pi by 3 into 2r whole cube minus r cube and that is 7 r cube so this is density and r to the power 4 dr integral is r to the power 5 by 5 so there is 1 by 5 coming here and if you put the limits well we get 2r raised to the power 5 that means 32 r to the power 5 minus r to the power 5 so which is 31 r to the power 5 well we now need to simplify this and this 4 pi cancels this 8 pi we have 2 here so in the numerator we shall get 62 mr square so it's 62 mr square divided by 35 and of course this r cube goes off from r to the power 5 so this is as far as ic is concerned let's now find io using the parallel axis theorem and this is equal to ic plus 2m r the whole square so that means it is equal to 62 by 35 mr square plus 4 mr square 2r the whole square is 4r square and this simplifies to 62 plus 140 that means 202 by 35 into mr square and so the time period t is 2 pi under root of 202 mr square divided by 16 into 35 kr square well it's a simple matter of solving this now and uh, well we find the value of n will come out to be equal to 70 so answer to question 21 is 70 let's now go to the next question Question 22 says a point charge Q is at the center of a conducting spherical shell of inner radius R and outer radius 2R. The shell is electrically neutral and there is a small hole in it. The amount of work required to move the point charge from center of shell to a very large distance through the hole is Q square by N pi epsilon naught R. The value of N is. Well, the question is from the topic electrostatics and uh, we have to consider what is the interaction energy initially and what is it finally so initially the shell itself is of course electrically neutral but because of the presence of charge q there is induced charge on the inner surface and that induced charge if say q is positive here is going to be negative and this is of course minus q minus q on the inner surface and because the shell is electrically neutral on the outermost surface again the charge is plus q now we have to find the interaction energy among all these layers of charges and which will also include the self charge right so first of all we look at interaction energy of this plus q with the charge induced on the inner shell and let's start writing the value of this energy now so well this interaction energy the first term we are getting because it's plus q and that and the charge on the inner surface is minus q it will be minus 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q square by r then let's take self energy of the charge induced on the inner surface and that is 1 by 8 pi epsilon naught minus q square is again q square only so this is the expression now well the interaction energy of this point charge and this induced charge with the outer charge will be zero because one is positive the other is negative and they are equal in magnitude now there is one more term and that is the self energy of the charge on the outermost surface that is like another shell and that self energy is again 1 by 8 pi epsilon naught q square by the radius and that radius is 2r so this is well the total interaction energy initially when the point charge has been taken to infinity well what will happen is that there will be no more induced charge on the, either the inner surface or the outer surface so we can consider that uf is going to be simply zero so the work done is equal to change in this interaction energy 
which is uf minus ui and since uf is 0 well it's coming out to be simply we have to take minus of the first one and let's evaluate that this is simply equal to minus ui and well let's evaluate this term so the q square by 4 pi epsilon naught r we take as common we get it here as 1 minus this is uh, well 1 by 2 and this will be 1 by 4 so it's 1 minus 3 by 4 and well this is further coming out to be equal to q square divided by 16 pi epsilon naught r so that means the value of n is 16 so for question 22 the answer is 16 let's go to the next one now question 23 says the ratio of wavelength of most energetic photon of Balmer series and that of least energetic photon of Lyman series of hydrogen atom is well this is a pretty straightforward and based on the Bose atomic model so let's find let's in fact name these wavelengths let's say the wavelength of the most energetic photon of Balmer series is lambda 1 so the expression is 1 by lambda 1 is equal to Rydberg constant r and we know that for the Balmer series well the transition is 2 n equal to 2 and for the most energetic photon well the transition is from n equal to infinity to n equal to 2 and that means here we have simply 1 by 2 square or 1 by 4 this is as far as the first wavelength is concerned let's look at the other wavelength let's call it lambda 2 so the expression now would be 1 by lambda 2 the wavelength of the least energetic photon of Lyman series again is R if we are considering hydrogen atom into transition in this case is happening from n equal to 2 to n equal to 1 so it's 1 minus 1 by 4 or 3 by 4 now well we have let's call it equation 1 and let's call this equation 2 we are interested in finding lambda 1 by lambda 2 so we divide equation 2 by equation 1 and that gives us lambda 1 by lambda 2 is equal to simply 3 so answer to question 23 is 0 3 pretty simple isn't it let's go to the next problem now question 24 says a small block of mass 2m and a ring of mass m are arranged as shown in figure the horizontal rod is smooth and the string is inextensible when the block is released the maximum tension in the string is kmg the value of k is and this is the arrangement that's been given to us well the let's first discuss what are the concepts involved the concepts involved would be conservation of mechanical energy the conservation of linear momentum and of course the laws of motion and of course also well we can use dynamics of circular motion so first of all let's find the speeds of the two blocks right no in fact before that what is the situation when the tension in the string is going to be maximum well when the tension in the string is maximum the string will be vertical in fact uh, now if we want to analyze why is that so so let's consider an intermediate situation where the ring is like this let's say and the block has come here this is 2m and this is m it has come down let's say at this point this is angle theta and it means that the block 2m has come down by l sin theta okay now at this particular instant tension is t so we can see that uh, this there is t acting here and so the ring has some acceleration a towards right at this point of time on this mass 2m there is the weight acting 2mg downward there is t here another point to consider is that as far as this 2m is concerned it is in circular motion with respect to the ring of mass m okay and generally in this particular case for example the ring itself is accelerated so if we consider the forces on 2m with respect to the ring itself so we have to put a pseudo force also so a pseudo force will be ma like this and it's in circular motion so the equation is that uh, well equation would be 
that t minus m a cos theta, in fact t plus m a cos theta is the force towards the center, that means towards the ring, minus 2 m g, its component along the string is 2 m g sin theta is equal to 2 m v relative square upon L, where v relative is the velocity or rather the speed of 2m respect to m. Now, if this is the expression for tension, now it is very clear that uh, tension will be maximum when theta is 90 degree because in that particular case, this term is minimum because this term is going to simply vanish cos theta will be 0. This is going to be maximum, sin theta will be 1 and in fact, V relative will also be maximum because the there would be maximum loss in potential energy and the linear momentum is being conserved. So, we have reached the conclusion that tension is going to be maximum when the string has become vertical. So, let us now work out what is the tension in that particular case. So, first of all, we apply conservation of mechanical energy and conservation of mechanical energy in that situation is going to give us the fact that 2 mg into L that is the loss in potential energy is equal to the sum of kinetic energy of both these two and since linear momentum is going to be conserved horizontally, so if I say the speed of 2 m is v 1 when it has become vertical, so 2 m has speed v 1 in this direction, so m will have speed well 2 v 1 towards right because linear momentum, the system of the particle, the block and the ring will be conserved horizontally and it has to remain 0. So, that is why this relation will come. So, again conserving mechanical energy, the equation is 2 mgl equals half 2 m v 1 square plus half m, its speed is 2 v 1, so it is 4 v 1 square. Well, the expression on the right hand side will be 6 m v 1 square divided by 2 or simply 3 m v 1 square. So, we have this value of v 1 and so the value of v 1 is coming out to be equal to 2 g l by 3, in fact square root of this. Now, let us consider the situation again. Here we have 2 m moving and the v relative will be in fact v 1 plus 2 v 1 that means 3 v 1 as far as uh, we are saying it respect to the ring is concerned. So, equation would be T minus 2 mg, 2 mg will be the real force again is equal to m v relative, in fact 2 m v relative square by L. Let us put the values now. So, we are getting T. So, we have T max is equal to 2 mg. Let us plug in the value of v relative square. V relative square is 3 times, V relative is 3 V 1, so it is 9 and in 2 G L by 3 again. Now, we have to simplify this. We see that the expression is coming out to be equal to this 3 cancels here, so this is 3. So, we have 2 into 3 into 2, 12 plus 2, 14 mg. So, we are getting T max is equal to 14 mg and that means answer to question 24 would be 14, the value of K is 14. Let us now go to the last question of this test. Question 25 says an object O is placed at a distance of 10 centimeter from a thin plano convex lens silver at spherical surface as shown in figure. The distance of image formed in centimeter from the lens is. So, we have a thin lens which is silvered. In fact, it is a plano convex lens and whose convex surface has been silvered. The object is at a distance of 10 centimeter from the lens we have to find the distance of the image formed by this lens. The question is from the topic ray optics and it is a case of silvered lens. So, first of all what we do is we know in this particular case we can replace this silvered lens by an equivalent spherical mirror and uh, the focal length of that equivalent spherical mirror well is given by the expression 1 by f m equivalent let us call it 1 by let us call it f m equivalent and this is equal to minus 2 by f l where f l is the focal length of the lens plus 1 by f m. We have one spherical mirror in the system. So, this is the equation. So, we need now to find the value of f l 
and to find the value of fl well the we use the lens makers formula 1 by fl is mu minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 mu minus 1 is 1.5 minus 1 which is 0.5 or 1 by 2 so it's 1 by 2 1 by r1 well r1 is infinity and r2 is minus 20 centimeter so we have 1 by 20 again and this gives us that fl is 40 centimeter right so this is 1 upon 40 centimeter that is 1 by fl what about fm fm is simply r by 2 and in this case it's a concave mirror so fm it is minus 10 centimeter so 1 by fm equivalent is minus 2 by 40 minus 1 by 10 and well lcm is 40 so we will have minus 2 and further minus 4 so it's minus 6 here or this is minus 3 by 20 and of course the unit is centimeter inverse let's now apply the mirror formula to locate the position of image the mirror formula is 1 by u plus 1 by v is 1 by f so 1 by v is 1 by f m equivalent minus 1 by u let's plug in the values now so this is minus 3 by 20 and the value of u is minus 10 centimeter so it's now plus 1 by 10 now it's a simple matter of doing this addition and subtraction well it's 20 as the LCM then we have minus 3 here plus 2 here and this is coming out to be minus 1 by 20 the value of V is coming out to be minus 20 centimeter so the image will form here itself because the O is at a distance of 10 centimeter the image will form here and this distance is going to be 20 centimeter that means answer to question 25 is 20 well with that we have come to the end of this quick solution i hope you found the solutions useful wish you all the very best take care and bye mm -hmm.